welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know and what you will know from the thumbnail, the title and if you read it in the description, surprise! This is a group of us ladies that have got together uh, to wish the lovely Anya Stamper, also known as Pink Sweets, and Blue with Apath, or Happy Birthday, for those of you who don't speak Welsh. Not that I speak much of it anymore, I will admit. But I do remember that one. So, Anya, my darling, this look I have put together because I thought you would like to see it. That's what that's what governed my every choice as to what I've put onto my face. If I thought you would like it, then I did it. So, especially for Anya, but also to all of you who are sitting here watching, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy, because here it comes. Hey lovelies, welcome back from the intro. <clears throat> it's raining out there, so I'm expecting my light balance to go up and down and up and down and up and down all day. That's going to be fun, isn't it? Um, I really didn't think I was going to be able to get this filmed. Because next door, the nice side that don't shout and scream and swear. I've had builders in for a fortnight. And then when the builders go, the three girls are back from school. So there's lots of happy noises and playful noises and screaming and, you know, three girls in one room. And then by the time the girls go to bed, I run out of spoons. And I'm like, but to keep up, I've, I've been filming at sort of midnight and ten o'clock and trying not to yawn at you. And the builders finally finished. I'm like, yes! Brilliant. And for the past two days, I've had people digging the path up right at the top of my drive because of a water leak. Now, at the moment, I think they've buggered off for lunch, so I'm going to try and get this filmed while they're not here. But if we do suddenly then get some construction noise later, I apologise. Um, this is still a teaching channel. Uh, so with my chronic pain and my wish for beginners to be able to keep up with me I'm going to be blending slower than most people do speed bridge it up there feel free to use it right I'm going to insert a clip now <clears throat> of me talking about the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes because a lot of people say oh I've got hooded eyes and I'm looking at it thinking no, oh, you've got deep set eyes, that's why your makeup's not turning out right. So I'm going to insert that clip now. Warning, it's can't be very up close and personal. Please don't scream or spill coffee over you or anything. Uh, and then once you've done that, I'll be back with this Juvia's Violets palette to chuck some colours on. Now... Um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC Paint Pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily, or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. 
Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Right, lovelies, I am back. Hello. By the way, if you're wondering why I've put my fluffy um, <clears throat> rainbow ears out, it's because this film is, of course, dedicated to my lovely friend Anya, because it's her birthday. And we decided to surprise her. There's a, there a, a group of us doing um, looks for her. No specific rule, just a look that we think she'd like. And I know she likes me in purples, so I haven't played much with this palette yet. So I thought, ideal time. Uh, I'm going to start off with one of these Do Colour brushes that I got from eBay. It's just basically a, a loose blending brush, but not as blown out as I usually start with. Because I'm going to start with the deepest colour and work up, so I want more control about how far up the colours go. Uh, there's no names on here. These are basically the two mattes, so I'm going to start with this one and then move on to this one and then use a mixture of these depending on how I feel once I've got the look on. 
side and yeah I'm pretty sure most of you will know her mainly because this week I've had two collabs with her um, I'm holding the brush right at the end as always and I'm doing small circular movements in this direction towards the nose and this direction away from it as always so yeah Anya um, for those of you who haven't yet seen the other films this week that I've done with her we did a collaboration where um, we let our lipstick dictate our makeup look because she bought the entire set of the Sophia Nygaard Colourpop lippies sadly I could only afford to get three so because I do more intricate eye looks now I used to be the one that, that would do very very nude eyes and then um, have brighter lips but I've, I've gone in the opposite direction recently and now I do more intricate eye looks so I tend to have more nude or neutral lips unless I'm on a night out when I'm looking for the power factor or if I'm doing an editorial look so I chose the three lipsticks that were ones that I would most likely use and she and I did a collab where she used the other three from the set and we let the lipstick dictate how our makeup went either from the name of the lipstick or from the colour of the lipstick so that was really fun it really was Although as someone who'd never watched Spongebob, I did have to watch a couple of episodes to work out what inspiration I wanted to use for one of the lipsticks. So as you can see, this is actually blending out. For a purple, this is blending out really nicely. There's a little bit of patchiness just here, but then I do tend to find that with my eyes because I've got dry patches here and here that are almost like an eczema and I can see from the way it's blending out over this side of the eye that it must be my skin affecting the blending out here but that's not an issue because when my eyes are so deep that so you can't really see that, um, that deeper line actually falls at just the right point so Yay! But yes, it's Anya's birthday and a load of us decided to get together. So I'm just marking out the shape that I've done that side over this side. Because obviously your eyes are not symmetrical. Unlike a certain Ginny Chuck, I don't photoshop mine, or filter mine, or do anything to mine, except occasionally I'll adjust the brightness, just so you see the true colour, but I don't fiddle with the warmth or the skin smoothing or any of that nonsense, mainly because I'm not clever enough to do that stuff, but also because I want you to look at my picture and think that's really pretty and be able to recreate the look yourself that's the whole point of me being a teaching channel that you can recreate with practice you can recreate the looks that I do because I like to think that I teach in a kind of way that passes the information on easily I don't sort of don't try and baffle you with too much technical bits and bobs I just 
I'll show you the easy way to do things basically. It's like when I do a cut crease, I show you the easy way to do it. I'm trying to do less blending around the edges than I normally do because Anya normally does very editorial looks where she does less blending. So I'm trying to get a similar style to her on this look. As it's her birthday and this is dedicated to her. I will most likely have wished her happy birthday in Welsh in the intro if you're wondering what Penblwyth Harpeth means. Because obviously half Welsh, half Yorkshire, I do mean rice dinner I tell you. I did do a main roast dinner. I can still do it, but it wipes me out for about three days. I'll tell you, my Yorkshire puddings, they're good. Now, I'm pretty sure most of you that are watching this will already know about you. But if you don't, let me tell you why I like her as much as I do. She is... She's truly a diamond. Um, she's, she is a real gem. She... There's times that I've shown her looks and I'm like, mm, I'm not sure about this. And she always has something positive to say about it. Um, she's so supportive, not just to her friends, but to everybody in the community. Um, I don't think I've ever seen her leave a comment that wasn't complimentary. Um, even on some looks that you look at and you think, ooh, that, that, mmm. They're, they're new to the makeup game. She finds something to compliment them on. You know? She's just. She's such a positive, giving person. You know, she. She will happily pass on her knowledge. She's not one of these people who think, I'm not going to tell you how to set your lighting up, I'm not going to tell you how to do this, because then you might be better than me at one point, like certain other larger channels I could mention, but I won't. Uh, do not pull your eye out like this, like I am doing right now. The only reason I'm doing it is because I've got super deep creasing here, and doing the circular movement does not get rid of the barcoding for me. As you can see, I have to do the same thing when I'm doing the um, the shimmer on the uh, <clears throat> on the lids. But I'll explain more when I get to that stage. But I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth, and then I'm going to go in with the other matte, the lighter one, and just just gently buff the edge out. I don't like using colour switches, they're much too harsh on your brushes. I did use them for quite a while, um, but I actually find that using a clean washcloth or a micropore cloth much, much better. Especially on your natural brushes, I mean these are synthetic, but don't use a colour switch on your natural brush. Yeah, I mean Anya will, she's the collab queen as well, she collabs with so many channels. To, to give them a leg up, you know, and to help them get noticed and increase their viewer numbers. She, um, 
if she likes you, she'll collab with you. She doesn't care if you've got three subscribers, 30 subscribers or three million. She doesn't look at your subscriber number. She looks at you. And if she thinks you're a nice person and she likes the makeup looks that you do and she can fit it in because, like I said, Collab Queen, she's got a lot of collabs, she'll collab with you. You know? And I love that because I'm exactly the same. Um, when I first collabed with Linda, she had, I think, seven subscribers and she was so shocked that I messaged her. She's like, Are you sure you've messaged the right person? And I'm like, yeah. Because I just knew how good this woman was and that she needed to be seen by more people. And Anya's exactly the same. If she sees talent that she feels is unappreciated, she'll do everything she can to help that person grow. And that's the kind of... That's how the makeup community used to be before all of a sudden you could start earning before you could earn money on YouTube when it was still you did it for the passion that's how the community used to be there was none of this backstabbing and infighting and none of that nonsense and you were genuinely pleased for your friend if they got a leg up on something. There was no backstabbing or jealousy like there is now in the, uh, the larger beauty community. Um, and we in, the, we in the micro community, the smaller community, we are what the makeup community used to be. And Anya is a great proponent of that. She You know, she, she sets by example, she leads by example. You know, and I've noticed that she's she's actually got some PR recently and I'm just so pleased for her. Because, you know, she works so hard. Um, and she has chronic pain like I do, so I know how difficult it can be sticking to a, a, a schedule. Because there's times when I'm thinking, Right, it's like this week I've, I've got four collabs going up this week and of course I was really starting to fret because I just wasn't A being able to, to film during the day and then B when I could film I was you know on days when the builders weren't in I was in too much pain typically and I was really fretting out about getting all of my looks done for this week thankfully I've managed to do it but I know how difficult it can be with chronic pain to stick to a schedule um, and the fact that I, you know, I can't think of a single time when she said to me can we move the collab can we delay the collab um, and the, you know there's, there's people that I've collabed with that have said Oh, you know, something's cropped up, is it okay if we delay it or can we press pause and do it a bit later? And I never have a problem with that because, you know, I know absolutely what it's like to suddenly have life come up and bite you in the arse. Um, and I'm always, always understanding of anybody who needs to change the date of a collab that we've got. You know, but I've, even with Anya's chronic pain, I've never known her need to move a collab. Um, and that too is, I planted a bit more than I intended to because I was getting carried away talking about Anya. Right, let's clean this brush off and then I'm going to grab a, f a different brush for putting some shimmers on. I think I'll grab... One of these, this is a Morphe M321. And once I've got the pigment on the brush, 
I'll be wetting it with my Slay All Day Jasmine because um, I love my Slay All Days but the Jasmine one for some reason dries my jawline out. Nowhere else, just my jawline. So I keep that for doing, for wetting um, pigments. Now, the question is, which of these do I want to use? Okay, that one's very pink because I don't want to use that one. I definitely want to use this one. Those two. I think the other one's a bit too pink. Right, so I'm going to go in with these bottom two here because these two have got more of a ready pink and I want to keep it true purple today. So, yeah, I just, I absolutely adore Anya. She's so lovely. And she always has something nice to say always. I mean there's times when we've collabed that I've, she's been saying, you know, go and watch Angie, and, like I did, talking about her channel, she talks about mine, and she says such lovely things I almost end up crying. Right, so I'm just going to pop this into the inner corner, and bring it about along to roughly where my pupil comes to. That's a really pretty shade. So I'm just going to dry the brush off before I go back into the pigment again. That really is pretty. That would be the perfect Jessica Rabbit shade if you were doing a, a look of hers. Worth remembering. Wow, that wind and rain is getting very. Mm. Right now, this side, because of that deep creasing, I do have to stretch the lid out because otherwise, what happens, instead of being blended across the lid, the pigment ends up filling up in the creases and then it dries through the day. And then, as I move my eye or blink or whatever, I end up with it. I end up with pigment going into my eye, which obviously irritates like hell. Um, but I also end up with it cascading down my face, which kind of ruins your makeup. And when you've spent time to look good, you don't want stuff to ruin it. Yeah, okay. Right, clean the brush off. When I'm wetting the brush, I'm always drying this ferrule as well. Because um, the last thing you want is moisture going down and loosening the bristles on your brush because then it won't be a brush anymore. Right, so I've now got the deeper pigment on and I'm going to pop that on second half of the lid I didn't pick up very much pigment then did I? Let's pick up a bit more It's a problem, dark pigment, dark brush, you can't always tell you've put, whether you've picked up enough on it That's better, and the deeper pigment was actually um, it's pressed firmer than the lighter one so you did actually have to work more to get the dark pigment up onto your brush right, I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles now just to blend where those two colours meet and then the same again where it meets the dark shade out there Dry the brush off, back in again, picking up more pigment this time. I really like this, but then I love purple on me, so 
if you've got green eyes, purple looks amazing. Which is why I like using it so much. That and the fact it's my favourite colour. Again, blend the edge there, blend there where it meets, I like that, I like that a lot. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off while I continue talking to you. Um, I'm going to clear up the fallout and uh, I shall go and put some foundation and some base products on and I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now for me I'm going to have to wait for the next time I press record to talk to you but for you my darlings it will be, if I can get this damn brush back in, there we go, it will be instant. Hey, I'm back. I'm going to give this soap brow thing another go. Can't make up my mind if I like it or not. So I've got the little thing from Revolution where you've got the little thing of soap and a little toothbrushy thing. Apparently you can use it either wet or dry. And I think I prefer using it dry because it holds my brows better. to the, the fluffy brow look. Reminds me of how my brows looked in the 80s before I started plucking the madness out of them. Let me give you a tip. If you are someone who for whatever reason <clears throat> has a lot of forehead sweating don't pluck your brows I mean I get an awful lot now because of chronic pain and side effects from meds and fibro meaning you can't actually control your body temperature anymore but um I noticed in the 90s when I'd over plucked my brows, <clears throat> and I mean over plucked my brows, I, um, it was a ridiculously hot day, and I'm like, oh my god, why are my eyes stinging so much? And I worked out it was because I didn't have any brow hair to soak the brow sweat up. This is just the micro brow pencil from Revolution. Just to add a bit of extra oomph to the front of the brows there. See, I'm really quite starting to like this look. I do like this. It's horrible at one point I was on them. Um, my doc tried me on some gabapentin for pain relief. <coughs> Made my hair fall out. I mean everywhere. Made my hair fall out. Forehead. Forehead. Brows hair, hair on my head, lashes, everywhere. It was pretty horrific. <clears throat> right, going in with this flat top brush into the deep matte that we used. 
just going to link that up and run it along the lower lash line. I've always had very sensitive eyes, I've never been able to put anything in my lash line, in my waterline for long. Um, and the fibro just makes that worse. So if you struggle like I do, then don't worry about putting stuff on your waterline. Just <clears throat> do like a nice smoky look underneath the eye instead. Because that will give you that will give you a similar effect um, of brightening up the eye, particularly if you're using a deeper shade underneath, you know. Trying to get hold of the brush. And it's a short one and my long brush is getting in the way. Right there we go. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. I love it. Flat top but chunky, so great for getting up under the lower lashes. And I'm going to go in with the lighter matte that I used on the top lid, just to soften and buff out. super pretty. I did my hourglass today because my skin was feeling a bit meh. So I did hourglass bronzer, blush and finishing powder. Nice. Right. Highlight time. Going in with Jeffrey's Northern Lights and I'm going to go into Arctic Sky, this one here which is the lilac -y one, lilac -y lavender. This brush is just an old lip brush that I got from eBay about 10 years ago. So I'll pop a little bit of that under the brow. These are his uh, Supreme Frosts, so not the stupid 50 quid a pop one. Those are the extreme, aren't they? These are the Supreme and the Super Frosts are his normal one. So these are like his, these are the ones that he bought out just after the Super Shocks. And I believe these are the ones that he said are made in Italy, have got real pearl in them. And they're like a gel, a set gel format, which is why they're more expensive and they're more glittery. Hmm, pretty. Right. I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to lob some more of this Arctic sky all over my face. Well, not all over my face, but all over my highlights of my face. Uh, I'll put some mascara on, I choose some lippy and I'll be back with my finished look once again for you. Instant. Ta-da! My finished look. Uh, okay, so I stuck Arctic Ice on my cheeks. Mascara today is my Catrice Glamondol Waterproof Volume Mascara. This is an absolute dupe for Benefits Bad Girl Bang, but it's waterproof and it's cheaper. Uh, the lippy is the NYX Suede in Lavender and Lace, which I think has gone remarkably well with this colour, this look. Um, I used my Hourglass Quad blushes and just did a mixture of all four. Hourglass Bronzer, finished off. I used my Cotier Spun to set my face, but then I went over the top with Ambient Dim Light. Just to 
used my Gerard Slayer Day in Rose. This I love this one. This is the one they did in um, combination with Nikia Joy. Love this smell. It smells like Turkish Delight. Makes me hungry every time I use it. Um, knocking everything over. And the foundation was the CoverGirl Outlast Active in shade 800 Fair Ivory and the concealer is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer in Fair Beige so this is my finished look to wish my lovely friend Anya Pembla with her Perth Cariad right now there are a lot of other ladies that have uh, joined in this to also wish Anya a very, very lovely happy birthday. They will all be listed in my description box. Please go ahead and check out all of their films too. And then maybe pop over to Anya's channel and just wish her a happy birthday. I'm sure she'd appreciate it. Right, my darlings, if you're one of my 4F babies, please check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you left, right and centre. If you're new here and you've found me through one of the other ladies, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you've made it this far through, I guess you must have liked a little something. Uh, the subscribe button is there. Please feel free to press it. We would love for you to join us as part of the 4F family, the nicest family on YouTube. And now, my darlings, as ever, You'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.